Hey everyone, JT here. Welcome to the huddle. Happy Friday, everyone. So for those that are tuning in for the first time, the huddle is where I sit down with other successful people from the world of sport and coaching to learn more about them, to learn about their journey to greatness. And I'm very enthused to have on a good friend today. Today, my guest is Megan Terzies. So welcome to the huddle, Megan. Oh, thanks for having me. This is exciting. Yeah. So just to let all of you know, beyond being an amazing wife, proud mom, okay, Megan is an international fitness cover model. She's a certified personal trainer. She's a lifestyle coach. She's a multi-talented, multi-passionate, just ray of sunshine and energy. And I'm so, again, enthused just to have you joining us and, and to learn a little bit more about you. So thanks again. Yeah, no, this is fun. I think this is great. And I think, um, you know, I love having these conversations and, you know, and thank you for all those kind words. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's funny when you, you know, you just, you just show up every day, you do your best. And then, you know, mm -hmm. having someone, you know, compliment you like that is like, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. So I guess the first thing I would love to ask you is you come from a fitness background and uh, I guess what made you first fall in love with fitness? What was it about fitness that really, you know, it became not just a hobby, but sort of became a passion of yours. So I'd love to hear about it. Yeah. I mean, I, growing up, I was always into sports. I mean, I played soccer for many years and volleyball. I always played on um, school teams in high school and elementary school. And so I instantly had this love for sports and not just sports, but teams. I love being on a team. And I, you know, and I'm not going to lie, like I was a horrible basketball player, but I was a really good bench warmer. I love being on the bench. I love being part of the team and being able to yeah. cheer everyone on and you know, uh, when I was in high school, I actually had a really bad knee injury. I tore my meniscus in my knee and playing soccer. And um, it really kind of pushed me to go to the gym um, because I could no longer play. I mean, playing soccer, I still to this day can't play soccer because the way that those movements and, you know, uneven grass and, you know, playing the environment, like, it just... I'm scared for another knee injury. So I really took to the gym and it was a way for me to stay healthy, um, you know, maintain a, a certain physique. And I, I just really kind of um, fell in love with that kind of weight training and being able to push yourself and um, the option of different cardio machine. Like, I don't know, I really, I really started to like the gym. And uh, that was kind of like high school. And, you know, and then I just kind of took to that. And then I think what the journey really kind of started to evolve was when I had became a mom, right? And I saw my body go through the changes of pregnancy. And um, I think for me that that was kind of after having my first child, I was remember being like, I felt like I kind of lost myself. I kind of felt lost in the body that I was in and just thought I need to get it back, not just for me, but for like, well, my own mental health and for me to be a better mom, I feel like I need to feel like me again. And so it kind of became this mission to, you know, lose the baby weight. And, um, and the, the trainers at the gym were seeing this progression of me, like, you know, gaining weight with the pregnancy and then having the baby. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, how my physique started changing by utilizing the gym. And um, I was actually approached by a trainer to uh, compete in a fitness show. And I was like, huh? <laughs> I don't know about that. But at the same time, it became this motivation for me because I was like, well, I, I'm always, I'm very goal driven. And if you give me something to work towards, it just motivates me even more. So it was an opportunity for me to really kind of kick it to that next year. And so um, six months post baby, I stepped on my fir on the first stage fitness stage that I had ever competed on and, um, and competed in my first fitness show. And I remember placing top five and being like, that's not bad. I just had a baby six months ago. This is kind of fun. 
And uh, for after that, it just became more of this mission to then help other women who mm-hmm. were moms and who were feeling how I felt after having a baby into, um, into you know, sharing that kind of journey and letting people know that there is like body after baby. <laughs> yeah. And um, and so I then competed in many more shows. I you know did um, I competed at our Canadian nationals. I placed top five. I qualified for the Arnold's. Um, competed on that stage, which is one of the biggest fitness stages in the world. Um, and then in between there, you know, having my second child, um, mm-hmm. and that kind of got me. You know, my story kind of became known in the industry. And then I started working with publications. I was contacted by Oxygen Magazine um, shortly after I had done a few competitions. And my, you know, my daughter was, you know, maybe seven, eight months at the time. And I started mm-hmm. working and doing some fitness modeling, which was really cool. It was another, you know, thing that I was striving towards. Was was you know possibly becoming a published fitness model. Um, and so it was kind of cool to be able to, you know, check off some boxes with, you know, oh, I competed. Yeah. And I got to do the fitness modeling and, and then I got to get sponsored by, you know, Reebok and all max nutrition. And so I, I developed these sponsorships, which was really cool as well. So it just opened up many doors for me. Um, and I'm grateful. I'm, I'm forever grateful for all those opportunities and those experiences because I do truly feel that they all really built me to who I am today. Um, and, you know, like there, they, there was a lot of work that went into it. You know, I never had an agent. I kind of was, I was my own agent. I was, you know, looking at magazines and um, talking with, you know, the publications and the photographers and those types of things. And a lot of women would message me and say, well, how, how do I get into fitness modeling and how do I get published? And, and how does that look for me? And I'm like, do your homework, do your research, right? Like yeah. find out who these photographers are, book a photo shoot with them, get to know them, follow them, engage with them, create conversations. And it just became about, networking and getting to know people and that kind of helped me put my get my foot in the door Mm -hmm. um and you know i i think that you know another thing too when it came to that world of you know fitness modeling it's not that you ever like some girls they'd get a message from a photographer that's like i would like to shoot with you but if you don't know who that photographer is and it seems a little sketchy (laughs) don't be going and doing a photo shoot with some random man that's messaging you Um, and so it just became, you know, having to really kind of know what your image is. I think that's important and, and know what your mission is with this. And so for me, it was always to inspire women and to help new moms and, you know, and it made me feel good at the same time because I knew that at the end, the end goal of this was always my health and my wellness, but there were so many cool things that came along with that. Yeah, no, and there's so many great things there that I, I want to dive into. Uh, but one thing that I really heard from you that came up a lot was this opportunity that you were very open-minded to finding these new opportunities, right? Whether it was first the sport, team sport thing wasn't going to work out and you had this knee injury and then all of a sudden, you know, shifting to fitness and then someone presents this idea to you about, hey, have you ever thought about a fitness competition? Yeah, why not, right? And it's just, it really speaks volumes to you that you're always open to the opportunity. And what I love that you shared was your ability to focus on goals, that you're very driven by goals. And one of the things that I often share with people is goals are important. Goals get us up in the morning and they give us that sense of purpose right? And, and doing, like you said, doing the work. So I, I really love the opportunity and, and really love what you're sharing about goals. Here's uh, something that came up as you were going. And, and another theme was this idea of mission. So I heard a lot of it about the word mission and how you were trying to share your message and share your experiences. How has that really helped you in this transition to go from you know sports to fitness fitness to to being a mom mom to being this amazing business leader and mentor to so many how how has this idea of having a greater mission how has that influenced your life i think the word mission is important and i think that that's 
you know, something that I, I look at with, within my life. And, you know, I think it's always, uh, we're, we're here, we, we serve a purpose, right? And I think, you know, as goals keep us motivated, so do our missions. And so I feel like, you know, there is this, this, there, I think it's always important for us to create a mission statement for ourselves and, and kind of what our mission is. Um, along with our goals. I think it just, like you said, it gets, it's what, what's, it is what that gets us up in the morning. It is what keeps us moving. It is what keeps us striving to become better and do more and, you know, create more success in our lives or happiness or whatever it may be. And, you know, and I, so I think that's, I think it's important. Yeah. I I love that. I love the mission. Right. And, and that's great. So Anyone that's ever talked with you, I'm sure anyone that's watching this live right now can tell that you are a woman on a mission. What supports that mission? So obviously you have, you know, you have lots of different priorities in your life, right? Your business, your mom, your, your team, your clients. Are there certain non-negotiables? Are there certain habits that you have that help you to sort of drive your, your mission? Like, are there any things that you, that are, are must do's non-negotiables for you every day? Yeah. I mean, I think we have, we have one life and we have, we're, you know, we're all put on this planet and our, our bodies are our temples and we have to do what we can to live the best life that we possibly can, that we can go to bed at night having, you know, knowing that what you did that day served a purpose or you feel good about what you accomplished. And so for me, I just think, you know, showing up, being honest, being authentic to who I am, that's so important to me. Um, and I, and I think too, like creating habits and rituals in your life. And so for me, I, I live a certain way because it makes me feel a certain way. Like it makes me feel good. And so I move my body every day, every day. And whether that is uh, an intense cardio workout or a weight training or a walk outside, I move my body because that makes me feel good. I make sure to drink my water. <laughs> I make sure to eat healthy foods. And that is what really, those are the, the habits and the rituals that really keep me, keep, keep me going. And, you know, I, I think we all can say that we felt it and for all those that are watching or listening um, that live healthy lives. Like you, you, you know, that's just the way that we live. But I'm sure that a lot of us, you know, could even say like, yeah, remember that time, like over the holidays where I overindulged and I stopped working out and how crappy you felt. Right. And how like unmotivated you felt. And so, and I know, like, I, I know how, you know, after a weekend of, of eating a lot and in potentially like having a few beverages, <laughs> alcoholic yeah. beverages, you can feel like crap the next couple of days. And it's, yeah. it can be very, you know, unmotivating. And I think we're in a time right now, um, especially when, you know, tensions are high, emotions are high. Um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of, you know, things happening in our world. And I think the biggest thing that we can do for ourselves is show up for us and, do you know, move and eat and drink your water and you know take your self-care seriously and there's just so many people that i have come in contact with that you know they they they, they neglected it and they feel like crap and they feel unmotivated and they feel depressed and so at the end of the day you have to take back control and you have to say like i'm in control of my life and i'm in control of who i am and what i do and you have to take ownership you have to take ownership of your health. And that's one of the reasons why I created my fitness program, Own Your Health. And that's where I came up with the name is like, you just, you, it's not about stepping on stage and looking a certain way. It's really about this full circle of eat right movement and, you know, self-care and sleep and all those things. And that's how we are going to really feel better on a day-to-day -day basis. And keeping those, you know, rituals in place is important. Yeah, no, and, and it's so, again, so many great nuggets there of, of wisdom from you. I love how you shared about that everything in life is choices, right? Like we have the power to on whatever those choices are. And one thing I often stress is greatness is a choice. Mm -hmm. 
average is a choice. And really it, it's about making the choices, the great choices. And I love how you said this about helping ourselves feel great. Because once we feel great in our body or, you know, it just, it, it's the starting points, a catalyst for feeling and it's just creating great results in your life. You know, I, one of the things I, I, I teach women and mm -hmm. uh, is to, it's okay to be selfish because mm -hmm. a lot of times we tend to serve, 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 serve. We want to serve our kids and our husband and, you know, and our homes, we got to do the laundry, we got to clean, we got, and there's so many things that we, we, we wear many hats <laughs> mm -hmm. and, you know, and I, I think that we tend to just give, give, give. And so I always say to women, like for me, I, I always will put myself, I don't want to say necessarily first, because there's lots of things that I always make sure my kids are well fed and, you know, yeah. but if I am not taking care of me, I'm not, I'm not as, a, as good as a mom as I really want to be. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, you like that analogy, you can't pour from an empty cup. And so I think it's so important, like, and I think for me with my mission and helping people and to really owning their health and taking that back is to be a little bit of self, a little bit selfish, go lock yourself in the bathroom, take a, uh, an Epsom salt bath with essential oils, you know, get up early and, and whether it's your basement or if you have a gym or go and get outside, like move, move your body, not like, and there's no excuses. And I think we are so quick to make excuses. And I think that mm -hmm. we just need to say, you know, there's no excuses here. We just need to put our health first. And I'm a big believer in what gets scheduled gets done. So if you're not used to moving your body, if you're not used to taking a bath, if you're not used to doing those things for you, mm -hmm. schedule them in your calendar. Like literally like 7 a.m. workout or 5 a.m. workout, um, 7.30 bath time, like schedule it in and make it a priority. Because if you're not making you a priority, everything else just kind of seems to kind of fall. Yeah. Again, that's so good. And what I'm hearing from you is like, you have to prioritize that me time. Like you got to get selfish. And I know seeing that with Alicia, that that's something that I, I feel that a lot of moms struggle with, right. Is just because they're so used to putting the needs of everyone else. Right. So it's definitely valuable advice, not only for moms, but just everyone else too, to prioritize that time. And one thing I, I always like to say, something that my mentor said, has told me is we all have the same 24 hours in a day. You can't manage time. You can only manage your activities. And as soon as, like you said, you take responsibility for what activities you have, like if you have enough time to sit down and sit on the couch and watch Netflix for two hours, right? You can, you have time to take a bath. You have time to go for a walk, right? <laughs> And don't get me wrong. I mean, it's always great to have those times. Like there has been a couple nights where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I get to sit on the couch tonight and yeah. I get to watch a Netflix show. Like, you know, and I, I think that, you know, we can be go, go, go all the time, yeah. but it's so important to, you know, take that time. And if it means sitting on the couch and, you know, watching a Netflix show or, you know, yeah. kind of being a little bit lazy, that's okay. Cause our bodies need to recharge. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, recharge them differently, you know, get, make sure the movement's happening and make sure, you know, that the self-care is happening and that, you're, you know, and I think too, uh, me as a mom, it's really important for me to teach my kids how to create proper and beautiful self-care rituals, you know, like washing their face at night and, you know, they're at that preteen age. And so they're starting to get like, you know, the... And it's like, well, let's, let's get you, let's get you going sooner than later. Right. Let's, let's talk about diet. Let's talk about what we're putting in our bodies. Let's talk. So I'm, I'm really trying to educate my kids on mm. what self-care means and, yeah. what and getting them in, in proper routines and proper bedtime rituals and, and things like that. And I think that that's going to serve them long-term as they grow up and have their own families. Yeah, again, so good. And, and definitely want to want to hear a little bit more. Uh, again, I know that that's the one thing I love about your own your health program is just it's just going at the fundamentals, right? Like it's literally the foundational building blocks, right of sleep, nutrition, movement that is just so good. So I definitely want to come back to that. And just because I know a lot of people can definitely gain a lot of value from that. Here's uh, one is 
what would you say is your superpower? So what makes you, like, what would you say is that one quality that, you know, is, 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 is that, what's that superpower for you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think my ability to show up, my ability to be consistent, you know, and I think it's really easy to start something and, you know, you do it for a couple, a couple times or a few weeks or a few months, but it's that consistency. I was actually, you know, it's funny because before this call today, or like just, just today, I, I, I found a picture of me from literally after I had Evie and it, I was looking at that picture and I was literally looking at like where I am today and what my 25 year old self did to now my 37 year old self is that I was consistent. I was consistent with how I showed up in my life and how I worked out. And, you know, I've grown a lot throughout those years. I've definitely had a lot of personal growth and a lot of um, trials and tribulations and, and things that helped me to grow to who I am today. But I look at some of the things that I did then what, like when it came to my health and my wellness, I that I implemented those at such a young age, right? And the reason that I'm able to sit here today being healthy and, you know, having this program, the own your health program and uh, being an entrepreneur and having all those things. It's, it's, it's the, the things that I, I did when I was younger, the, the, the rituals that I created and being consistent. And so I think that consistency is a very, very strong um, tool and a, a superpower that we can all put into place. <laughs> if that yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and it definitely does. And, and I love just, again, that simplicity about what you say. And that's the one thing I've come to appreciate as, as, as we've gone to know each other, as our families have gone to know each other is you have a very simple message and it really is about consistency and doing the little things really, really well and doing it great, doing it to the best of your ability. And through that, that's what allows you to build a strong foundation, which allows you years and years and to continue to reap the rewards. That's a great, okay. What is, and this one might get you to think a little bit, what is one thing that you used to believe that you no longer believe? So is there something that, you know, in the past that you were so there and now you're like, no, no, that's, that, that's bullshit. That's a good question too. <laughs> Rapid fire. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to get off this call and be like, oh my gosh, there's like a million things that, yeah. um, but to think of it on the, on the spot like this. Um, I don't know. I, I think that I think sometimes it comes down to like maybe diet for me or like, okay. eating. um, like yeah, that's yeah. kind of where my head's going is like, you know, we're kind of programmed to think that, you know, eating a certain way and then mm. learning how to, you know, like I, I look at growing up as kids, like my, you know, my parents, my mom, my mom's a great mom and she, you know, took care of us really, really well and, you know, did all the things. But we also like ate a lot of like microwaved meals and, you know, really like casserole-y kind of yeah. high, high butter, like yeah. <laughs> high, high, high flour. And I think what it's like what you don't know, you don't know. And, and mm -hmm. really evolved. Um, and I look back and, you know, used to think that I was eating really healthy to where I'm at now. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? That's one thing that's kind of coming to my head right okay. now. Okay. I'm sure that there is going to be some sort of like big life aha moment that I'm like, oh, I should have said that. Um, but yeah. No. no, and I love that, right? And and what I really heard from you beyond like the, the food was this idea of it's understanding that we are doing the best we can at our current level of awareness, right? So, you know, I think back to, you know, my fitness journey, I remember thinking that, oh yeah, I just want to eat fast and you just eat these things because that's just what other people are doing, right? So that's where, that's what I really got from that was just how your awareness changes as you get, right? As you grow. Or even like the, the misconception of like, in order to look a certain way, you have to be, you have to eat tilapia and broccoli all day. <laughs> or you have to eat, you know, chicken and you have to eat chicken and your veggies. Yeah. Um, whereas for me, like I look now, I have a very flex diet. I've really mm -hmm. learned how to intuitively eat. Um, I don't restrict food. 
Now I'm, I'm, mm. I'm cautious and I, I have like a really good 80, 20 where I, okay. you know, 80% of the time I eat clean and I eat healthy. And then 20% of the time it's like, okay, we're going to go for dinner tonight or we're going to have maybe, you know, pizza tonight or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't have guilt. And I, and that's something that I did for many years being in the fitness industry was I actually had to really create um, when I finished the fitness industry is kind of create a healthier relationship with food. And I think that a lot of people can relate to that, whether that they're on a fitness journey or they're not, I think, um, eating is, and I mean, you, I mean, your, your wife, I mean, she's going to becoming a nutritionist and I mean, she's learning so much and, you know, I've learned so much as well throughout, you know, this process for me. Um, but creating a healthy relationship with food is definitely something that a lot of people can, you know, kind of need to work on. Um, and you know, when I look at when I was a kid to the foods that I used to eat when I was, as a kid, and as I ventured into this, you know, competing world of like, mm-hmm. Oh, you don't eat this. You can't eat a banana. You can't eat yogurt. You can't. And it was all these restrictions and then learning that, no, you can, and how to incorporate and how to really create this really beautiful relationship with food and, and with your diet, you know, it's evolved. Yeah. It's so good. I, again, you know, what I heard from you is around these ideas of just simple principles, right? Like, I love the fact that you shared that, yeah, 80, you know, I'm eating pretty clean 80% of the time and 20%, I'm treating myself, right? And and just, you know, just having some fun and just enjoying life. And if anyone, I mean, if anyone follows you on, on social, and we'll make sure to sh- follow a lot of, um, share your hand, your handles out with everyone is, right, is it, it's, I've always appreciated the fact that you do, you do practice what you preach. Like you see those, these amazing dinners that you're out with your family and you're seeing all this food, which sometimes I see it and I'm like, that looks pretty good. So, so it's great that you're doing that. I'm also married to a Greek and so he <laughs> enjoys eating. So yes. <laughs> I have to have that. And like, I love food too. We're both foodies. We love eating, yeah. uh, restaurants and, you know, we love to eat. And there's people that see that probably like, how, how is she like, <laughs> <laughs> yet like she posts these pictures of like these like elaborate meals that she eats and I'm like it's because we don't eat like that every night it's yeah. it's, it's something that we enjoy and we have like life is only so sh- like it's only so long it's 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 you have to make the most of it and for us you know it's good food is good food <laughs> yeah that that is one thing I will say that why I always enjoy coming to your house because you'll always you'll never you'll always get a nice you always feel very full and satisfied coming there you always get well fed so that's that's great. No one leaves hungry in this home. Uh, no, nope, no, nope, that's true. I can I can speak that. So tell us I, again. You you have lots of different things going. So so you you know you've been launching this this great own your health program. You're an amazing leader in the wellness space and in your essential oil business. What are your, what would you say is our goals that you have for 2021? Is there something that you're really looking to do, accomplish in 2021? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we, I, I'm, you know me, I'm very goal oriented. So there's lots of goals, lots of things, yeah. you know, business wise, um, personal wise, uh, you know, there's, there's always something that we're striving for. And I think that, you know, for me, 2021 is, is, is really about, uh, for me, with my business, especially is, is collaboration. Uh, and that was one of the words I, I feel like, you know, kind of going into a new year, there's always a word that you're kind of gravitated to, or you're like kind of holding on to. And, and this year it's all about collaboration. And, and so looking at our, our team and things that we're doing, uh, you know, I'm working with other people and collaborating that way. Um, which, which has been fun. And it's, it's also kind of given me that kind of, you know, I think sometimes, especially as an entrepreneur, we tend to want to take the bull by the horns and we want to, we want to like kind of run at it. Right. And, yeah. and sometimes that might look like we're, we're on our own or, but we're not. And there's so many people that wanted to join us and we want them to be part of it. And so coming together is, is a really big thing for this year. And I think more than ever, we need community. Um, mm-hmm. We need people. And especially when we are, you know, resorting to this online world of Zooms and, uh, you know, we're not getting together person to person. So I think the more we can create community, the more that we can collaborate, the healthier it is for us. 
right? And, and the more sane that we can be, I, I think that we need to be with people. I think what we're dealing with right now, it's not normal, but we have to somehow make this normal right now. So mm -hmm. for me, I really want to create a space of people feeling like they're part of something and that mm -hmm. they're part of community because I think we need it more than ever. And again, another reason why the Own Your Health program is so important too, like yes, community within my business, but I wanted to do something outside of my business world. And that was bringing people together to feel supported, to feel heard, to feel that you've got their back. Um, I've always been like, I feel like I've always been kind of that natural leader. And so I have an ability to help people. And I've kind of looked at this as this year as, well, why, why can't, why wouldn't I help people? And so even begin first, first week of January, January 4th, I launched a free five day kickstart challenge. I just like, again, it wasn't anything to do with I, me being paid any, like it, it was just me wanting to create community. We created a, a mm -hmm. private Facebook group that involved like 250 individuals that wanted to be part of this. And it created a community within that week of helping and supporting and giving tips on lifestyle and, and fitness and workouts and, and all sorts of things. And it was fun. And I had so many people afterwards thank me, just, just thanking me saying, you know, that, that made me feel really good. And mm -hmm. so it kind of, that kind of kickstarted my, my 2021 with a really good feeling of I gave back and I, and I, you know, served my community as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love the word. Right. And, and you talked about, you know, being open to collaboration and, and, surrounding yourself with like-minded people and and really this idea of building community and I agree it, it's an interesting time in human history but this is where we need to come together right as, as more and that's what I do love about watching what you're doing beyond you know going downstairs and seeing Alicia and Kiana doing the workout with you your five-day challenge it was great I, I just love seeing you know the my two favorite girls just you know doing through the workouts but I love that it's not just and it's not just a fitness program. It's not just a wellness program. It's really about providing space, right? And holding space for, for other women to come together right now. So that's, that's amazing. And, well, and definitely, sorry, go ahead. No, and that's one thing that like too with, with my program is that it's not just like, oh, here's this ebook of, you know, recipes and this and that. I actually do a weekly Zoom call with this group so that there's that, connection there's that connection piece right and I yeah. think that that tends to be missing and and you know for me personally like being in the fitness world I've worked with many personal trainers and I'm so grateful for them they're amazing women that have helped me through this journey they've helped me with those relationships with food they've helped me with my you know the workouts and my physique and helping me to accomplish these goals and so I look at my coaches from the past and I'm forever grateful for them but I also made this program around what might have been missing what was that missing piece with some of those coaches that I could help provide for, you know, and mm -hmm. help that I can kind of like fill that, that void. And so I put a lot, <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of me in that program because it, yeah. it's, you know, the things that I felt that I knew that I could, I could up level. Yeah. I, I know you, I've, I've known you for a while. I know that you're, you're kind of all in. So, I, and I've seen, you know, I, you, I've seen what you create and I, again, it's, it, I know it will be tremendous value and I, I'm really enthused just to see the results that people get from doing your program because it's, you're an amazing leader. So that's great. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. And, you know, just the support from you and Alicia, I mean, that's yeah. it's so great. And, you know, anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. So, so the last, uh, question I have is how can people connect with you? How can they learn more about the Own Your Health program? How can they sort of follow you? Like, is there any way that people can just learn more about how you are sharing your message with the world? Um, yeah, I mean, I obviously social media platforms. I have my, my website. It's um, essentialjourney.com co socio. Yeah. Um, and then I, most people connect with me via, um, Facebook or Instagram and my handle is just Megan Terzes. I've okay. always kind of branded myself with my name. Okay. <laughs> it's more of the business name, but, um, through there, if people are wanting more information on the own your health program, the link is in my bio on my Instagram. Um, okay. it's 
all over my Facebook right now. And um, I do have a landing page on my website with all the information and sign up and stuff like that. So all that information. Okay. So I'll be sure to include this in the description and then people definitely that I know that this is going to resonate with some people. I'll, I'll be sure to put that on there so people can reach out to you and, and connect with you. And if anyone has any questions or just mm -hmm. wants to learn a little bit more, you know, and I, I know that with some of these things comes, you know, needing to kind of trust the person, right? I feel yeah. like there's that trust comes. So just come, like, come hang out with me on social media, get to know me a little bit through there. And uh, if the program then seems right, a right fit, then, you know, it's yeah. always, there's always the, the time and place, right? It's always yeah. that. Well, and, and again, I'll, I'll speak sort of on behalf for anyone that's just meeting Megan for the first time. What you see is what you get, like this energy, this positivity, right? Like this ability to activate people and really get them moving. Like this is, this is who she is, right? Like this is, this is exactly it. So I definitely encourage anyone watching this that resonates with to, uh, to reach out to Megan. Uh, first and foremost, Megan, I just wanted to acknowledge you for all the amazing work that you're doing first and foremost as a as a leader as an amazing mom a, you know a, an amazing wife and just uh just being that leader in the wellness space right now and i know you're multifaceted multi-passion so i just wanted to acknowledge you for all that you're doing in this space well thank you you know I, it's it's my passion it's you know i feel that it's just something that i'm i truly believe in and I think that's the most important thing. You have to, you know, practice what you preach and you have to 100% believe in it. And I, I believe that, you know, we all have the opportunity to own our health and to really take control of, of how we feel. And um, it's so important. And especially more than ever in a time like what we're living in, it's, we need that. We, we need to really focus on our health and our wellness. And I just feel like more than ever, this is the time for me to really show up strong for people and um, to help people to find their way in this. Because I know that there's so many diets and so many this and so many that, and there's all these workouts and there's so many things coming at us. And I know that sometimes I know I can get very, I'm always about simplicity. Um, and I know that if there's <laughs> many things coming at me, I can regress. And I'm like, yeah. oh, Right. And, yeah. you know, and whereas this, it's like, you just need to know that it's simple and it's easy, but it's just creating really simple, easy habits in our life that we start to see these massive changes. Mm -hmm. But we need to be consistent with it. And we need to make sure that we're implementing that and that we're, we're showing up and doing the things. Yeah. No, again, and, and we're going to end off on there just because that was so beautifully said. I, you know, it's so again, so thank you, Megan, for, for coming on today on the huddle and uh, definitely looking forward to continuing to, you know, be a part of your journey. So oh, thank you. I appreciate it. It was fun. Yeah. So thanks everyone for joining me on the huddle today. And again, I'll, I'll be sure to share Megan's, all of her information, all of her uh, social media handles in the description and be sure to reach out to her if you have any questions. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks guys. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording.